One, two, three, four. Four days left for the biggest promotion Mind Pump has ever done. But first, a giveaway, a free program for one of you lucky viewers. Today's free program is MAPS Aesthetic. This is the bodybuilder-inspired MAPS program. This is the workout program that Adam used when he used to look really fit and sexy back in the day. Believe me, he did. He looked that way. Great program. Very effective. It's actually one of our top selling programs. One of you will get it for free, but this is how you can enter to win. You have to leave a comment in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Turn on your notifications and subscribe to this channel. You got to do all those things. If we like your comment, we will notify you and you'll get free access to MAPS Aesthetic. And then maybe you too can look the way Adam did. I don't think so, but you can definitely try. All right, so here's the four days left promotion, right? So we did three bundles. And in each bundle, there's multiple MAPS programs. It gives you nine months of exercise programming. That means that for the next nine months, you know how many sets and reps and what exercises do. You got video demos, everything planned out for you. Okay, so imagine all the changes you could make in nine months. It's incredible, right? But there's three of them. One is for beginners, one is for intermediate people, and one is for those of you that are advanced. And they're all discounted heavily, like over 70% off. So it's a huge promotion. We're not going to run it again, probably not till next year. Uh, so if you're interested, head over to mapsjanuary.com, click on the one that's right for you and get started. Also, if you just want to do one MAPS program, you want to try it out, but you want to do just one, try MAPS Anabolic. That's the flagship program. That one is 50% off. You can find that at mapsred.com, but you do have to use the code January50 for that discount. All right, here comes the show. You want to make some of the fastest gains you've ever made in your lower body? Use the sled. Here's the best part. You can do it every single day. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ooh. You know what's, uh, what's- So overlooked, man. So overlooked, and it is one of the few <clears throat> strength and muscle building lower body exercises, I guess you could put it in that category, that you literally can do a tremendous amount of frequency on yeah. and not suffer like the same consequences you would if you did like, let's say, squats every day or front squats oh or- God. Anything like that. I've been such an evangelist of sleds for so long. And it's it's just now like I, I get encouraged because I see it more often in the gyms and like they actually make turf areas for the sled. So I think that, um, you know, it's more accessible. So it's like we can talk about it now. It used to be one of those like functional tools that only, you know, sports specific people had in their gyms or not. But there's so much value in the sled, especially, I mean, anywhere from, you know, a kid to you know 80 year yep. olds like there's just it's it just spans across like all uh you know different types of of people and where they're coming from yeah. do you do you think that has a lot to do with it no eccentric portion yep. of the exercise i absolutely do yeah i know i'm right now i'm trying to think of like what other movements that are popular where uh it's completely eliminated the eccentric portion of the exercise yeah. well that, you're doing the work right like the the machine isn't like placing a force on you uh, so you're the one that's driving, dictating, you know, how much effort you want to put into it. I know. What else is like that? Is there anything else that would be I like? I mean, Olympic lifts technically are all, um, you know, no eccentric, right? You, you do the, you do a clean and press, drop it or a clean, drop it. Um, and, and that's, there's something to be said about that. The eccentric part. So you have whenever muscles contract three, three different ways, right? Generally there's concentric, which would be like, if I'm doing a curl, I'm curling the weight. Eccentric is lowering. That's actually a, a type of muscle contraction. And then isometric is holding. And the, the one that causes the most damage eccentric. is eccentric. It's the lowering of weight. Isometric <clears throat> and uh, concentric cause less damage. Now, there is a positive to eccentric. It's also the most connected to muscle growth. But the limiting factor is you can't do it all the time. It's so damaging on the body. So this is kind of like a hack, right? With the sled, I can do it so frequently. Like I can literally do three sets you can basically of- do it every day. You can, and you get, and it's super safe. Like it's, I feel no joint pain. In fact, I feel like my joints almost get like a chance to recover. So if I'm starting to feel stiff from doing lots of squats and deadlifts, mm -hmm. I just start using the sled. Yeah. I don't lose any muscle mass, which tends to happen if I do any other exercise aside from those other ones. And my <laughs> joints feel really good. And I can do it like every single day if I wanted to and feel fine. It's, you know, uh, one of my favorite things to do, you know, it, it's inevitable when you are training, no matter what kind of great programming you're following that, you know, we all have a tendency to have those days where we overreach. Um, it's one of my favorite tools to supplement into my routine when I'm, let's say I, I have a, a program I'm following and I'm squatting at least two or three times in the week. And, you know, on Wednesday I get, 
you know, a little excited and throw on probably more than I should. And then Friday, I'm back at legs again, and I'm really sore still from Wednesday's workout. I'll drive the sled that day. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's one of my favorite things to do in replacing something like that when I overreach, because then I still feel like I get this great workout, but then I it almost feels recuperative yeah. uh, while, while also still building. It's it's a weird- That's what I'm saying. It's, yeah, it's so strange. unique. Um, and, and then there's some other benefits as well. Um, one of them is the that it, it strengthens the foot- and the ankle yes, yes. through that range of motion. So like you could do calf raises and you'll technically work the foot and the ankle, of course, but it's not working the foot and the ankle in conjunction with the knee and the hip, which is how you, you'll you use it in everyday life. With this, as you're driving, your foot has to get stronger and mm -hmm. your calves and your tibialis and all the stabilizers have to stabilize and strengthen. And the benefits are tremendous because they all work together. So, it's, so your weakest link starts to catch up. And this is what I've noticed. My feet and my ankles feel so much sta more stable and stronger because I've been driving. Oh, it's huge for that, especially athletes. Like it, you know, being on the forefoot and and you know, like you don't want to be on your heels in any athletic endeavor. No. And so this is one of those that helps you kind of train and strengthen again. Uh, you, you know, your feet to be uh, stable and strong in those positions. And so to to uh, add some some volume to that and frequency to that, I think is super valuable. Yes. And then what you can do, and this is what I've been doing too, is you can incorporate some isometric um, stabilization in the upper body with your drive. So the two different ways I'll do this are either fully extended. So let's say I'm driving, you know, three or 400 pounds on the sled, which is, you know, a decent amount of weight for me. Keeping my arms totally extended and fully extending my shoulders, like that has to, I have to be able to support the weight with my arms, shoulders, scapula, my core, right? So that's good. Or I can bring the sled here. Mm -hmm. And now I have to stabilize in this kind of, down pressing position as I'm driving with my legs, and they all, they both have really good carryover to upper body exercise. Well, shout out to to um, the knees over toes guy uh, putting out great information on this stuff too. But about also like bulletproofing your knees and like getting yeah. in that position, like even dragging it backwards. Yes, you know, so it. it puts a lot less strain and, and impact on your knee, but also gets it stimulated uh, in order to um, also like build strength and support around your knees. Yeah. And then those of you that are like, you know, don't enjoy the, I guess, the stamina conditioning aspect of exercise, which I get, um, that's not my favorite either. The sled gives you a decent amount of that. Like if you push it just further than a short distance, um, you'll your heart will start to beat and you'll get like a conditioning this is why athletes like to use it, uh, or why coaches who train athletes like to use it, because they get the strength with the with the with some of the strength stamina thrown in, which you don't necessarily get uh, as easily with traditional lower body exercises. So, since we're talking about great fitness tools, are we going to talk about the stupid one that you bought the other day? That's not stupid. <laughs> Did stupid. you try it? Because like, yeah, I, I don't even need to. I already know it's going to be yeah. stupid. Well, tr try it. <laughs> I got, I got it in and, and, and tried it. <laughs> did you get in and do it? I did. It was, it was pinching my sack and everything else. Well, that's, that's so, tell the, so tell the audience. So Sal bought the other day a- No, no, no. Uh, we all bought. Oh, yeah, you're oh, right. You're yeah, right. Yeah, 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 collectively. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. I didn't just, it was all of us yeah, bought Yeah, we did all buy it. I don't know much say it, but Sal found this- I mean, I guess we should tell them where I'm going to shit well, on it. Well, don't so shout on it. Don't give them the name because I don't want you to – because I like yeah. it. I do. It, it requires some setup, but it's a belt <laughs> squat attachment. And if anybody's ever seen a belt squat machine, it takes up a lot of space. It's kind of a pain in the ass if you have your own gym. Yeah. But this is an attachment in the cage. Yeah. And there's a couple things I had to do. I had to add plates to give me more depth. I think there's going to have – I'm going to have to put like a two-by-four to hold it up when I load it and then lift it and knock the two-by-four down so I could do my – but it loads the weight and pulls at the hips, so it takes out the kind of the lower back. Right. And for someone like me, with my knees really Belt apart, loaded squats. Yeah, yeah. And so when my knees are apart, with a wide stance and going low, for me, that's challenging. And I really got some decent feel and. and so I want to be out. clear because I know somebody, of course, your fans that will defend you right away. I think Our belt loaded squats. <laughs> belt loaded squats are amazing. I think the tool he bought is what's terrible. You haven't used it's it a yet. little funky. I don't even uh, have to. I can tell by the mechanics of it. It looks it's pulling away from you. Uh, it's not as much. That's not an issue actually. Really? Yeah. The issue is the setup. That's the Justin part. Justin said that was an issue for him. No, it, it was the. It, okay, so I, we don't have the it, right belt. It's really the belt and yeah. it's the chain mm -hmm. and it's the whole attachment. It's it's just funky, like the because. Of the setup but it is too like the angles challenging to to direct it completely how it should because i've done the other one and mm -hmm. i know the difference so it's like it's it's way smoother but you know again you can make it work 
I understand where you're going. Like you're just trying to put all the work in in those cakes, man. You're trying to catch up. <laughs> I, I, I get it, dude. What's the what's I'm the jealous. what's the over under on the last day he ever uses it? The last day? Yeah, like I, I use everything. I bet I bet after I bet after three weeks from today, Doug, put it on the calendar. Three weeks from today, you'll never see him. You strap think he'll that thing use up. it more than that deadlift uh, cage thing that he bought? <laughs> That's my I, I, even that. I like that way more than I like yeah, this one. Yeah. yeah. So my bet is with Listen, it, I use all I the stuff in there. Dude. More than you do. Yeah. So, <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> so there. Boom. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. I, I actually liked it today. For for someone like me whose mobility is an issue, yeah. it's going to help me challenge my mobility. I, I'm so I'm going to use it quite a bit. Yeah. Just uh, we'll see. We'll see. I, my yeah. three weeks. That's the over under. Yeah. So that's the over under. Yeah. Right. We'll get a new <laughs> belt and I'll see if I can uh, yeah, make I it work. I'll get a yeah. better attachment because yeah. you're right. The the belt that we I had to use was the one that well, we used for pull ups. I would love to I have. I need it for the sled anyway. So we could you know double that up. For yeah. Because Justin said he's gonna he's gonna look into getting a different sled because the one yeah. we have is kind of it, that funky, one's funky too which is true what is it because it's too like tipsy like yeah, you want something that's a little more it's rickety and like, there's just so many better options now out there and there's like just a single loaded plate you know that you can drag yeah. versus uh, look at us one upgrading our life huh no, yeah, we gotta uh, upgrade dude <laughs> we're a fitness yeah, podcast <laughs> luxury that, fitness we over. just finally got rid of that janky ass bench that we had forever that though that we, we had that God. cheap remember when we first started we, we couldn't find any, hazard. any companies that would like you know hook us up or give it we we weren't even asking for free stuff back then we were just yeah. like could we get a discount mm -hmm. we have this podcast we were like five thousand followers back yeah then. and yeah. i think they gave us like 10 percent off or some know. shit so we went with this it. this is your special discount like wait yeah. i just saw that on your website and then we get the the yeah. bench and it's yeah, like so when you, I do you're good to it's do. like i'm on a stability ball <laughs> uh, no on accident yeah. Yeah. well hey you know you made you work against all somebody kinds picked of it up i think jerry put it out in front of the studio and said whoever wants it for free so somebody's out there getting is it. There, nobody wanted is it. there any piece of equipment that we have out there that need, that you guys never use? Never use? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't use those calf machines oh, you guys bought. Well, yeah, mean, because come on, guys. Shut up. Yeah. yeah, no, I like those. I like we use the. I use those. Do you um, use both of them? I do, although I do. Well, so I actually don't. The stand up use, one's awkward to get in, but it's yeah, okay if you get into right. So place. I like using that for legs. So I on a, if I, I mean, I'll use that for the hack squat, I guess. So if I like, let's say I have a day where I was just talking about where I've I taxed my legs and I went, overreached. Yeah. Um, I will do that machine in a sled. That then that's oh, my yeah, workout. Yeah. Like that's a great. So like, the calf aspect of it, it's kind of awkward because you got to get in weird yeah. or whatever. And if and then if the range of motion is kind of short, you're here. Yeah. So I figured out a uh, kind of a hack. So, you know where the shoulder pads sit on your shoulders? Yeah. If you walk forward in the machine, so scoot yourself forward so you're at the front of the shoulder pads. Yeah, I got it. You'll get more of a range of motion. Oh, almost like you're leaning forward like it's the, just, you're, like the, this. Pad, you're, I'm, the, the back of the pads are back here, yeah. so I'm way more forward. Oh, uh, okay. It actually works a little better. Oh, okay. Remember, I've been working out in backyards and home gyms forever, so I, I, <coughs> you got to do that when you don't have to Yeah, I'm trying to think, what, what, what equipment, Doug, does anything pop up for you that we, we have that we've just, I use all the bars that we have, mm -hmm. so like all the, yeah. I, I love that you we like have. like the Buffalo bar? Yeah, buffalo I bar love that sick. we have all those. Um I'm trying to think if there's any, obviously the dip stuff, that's obvious that we love all that. I'm trying to think if there's anything out there that we use everything. It's, it's yeah, the only thing I haven't rower. used is that uh, power rack that you have, but yeah, mainly because I don't know how. Uh, the the deadlift really? one he's talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the deadlift. deadlift oh, yeah, one. that's but cool. The, I've done cool. some, I've I've done some banded times. deadlifts already on that. I, I, I just haven't focused on like strength in a while because I'm trying to get my joints to feel better. So that's why I haven't. Because if I do, I get carried away. I love the the, the hard heavy shit, and I just got to focus more on. You say you haven't my, been doing strength? Not hard strength. No, I really? Know. It looks like because I'm so strong. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I haven't at this guy, all. This guy says that for like a week, dude. You do some, you do a couple of mobility exercises, and you're like, you I'm think, totally. Hold on, a second. Do you like watch all my workouts? Like, what's going on <laughs> he here? Does. What do you mean? I, we can all hear them. They're in yeah. here. All, we, <laughs> every one of us. There's no, <laughs> no, it's true. I, I I don't go lower than eight reps ever anymore because my my. Oh I did, wow. Yeah, or rarely, I should say, rarely. Because it just it just starts to bother that's me. That's good. Bit. That's good awareness. Because that's typically where you like to be is in the the five by five world. You I know, know, dude. And you once you get to a certain point, it's like uh, you know, it's cool when you've been working out for a long time. What you need to do to keep your gains is way less than what you used to have to do yep. to keep your gains. Yep. So now I can train. You know, with better form, with just perfect form. It's the benefit, but it's also a totally different mindset. Totally different you, you mindset. You have to, you have to kind of concede to it. Oh, dude, I remember in my twenties, man, I'd walk into the gym and it was like, uh, it was like I was invincible. I'm gonna do everything as hard as I can, 
and I'm going to feel fine. Afterwards. You know what I use the least amount that we have in here? I actually don't use our kettlebells that often. Mm. Really? I yeah. use those all the time. I know you do, yeah. though. You use the kettlebells a lot. You like to press with them I do, a lot. Yeah, I, 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 I see press you press with them a lot, which I do like that. So I need to get back into doing um, the clubs uh, more often. I was mm. just in the oh, mace. Oh, that's what I don't use. Oh, right. I, I never used, use the clubs or the mace. Man, I, he, I you mean. You guys I, were doing it for a while, though. I would see you guys. I was, I was on a hardcore kick for a while where it was pretty much how I got ready for every workout. I started doing that. And I tell you what, I. I picked them up the other day and noticed like how much I've lost already from not using it like that consistently. So I would, you know, I think I want to try practicing the mace. It's pretty impressive to see you swing that big ass. I mean, how much that one weigh? It's like um, the big one, 50, yeah. 50 pounds. The big one's only 50, yeah, uh -huh. say it's but it's a long 50 lever. pounds is exactly it's, yeah. <laughs> it feels like 500. It might as well. Be. I won't even do it. I'm scared to do it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, I've worked up to the 30. The 30, I can, I can move around properly. Pretty. properly. You're screwed. Well, I remember one time you were doing it, and Adam brought the dogs in, or one of the dogs in, and he was running by, and he had to stop. Oh, my oh God. Oh, my God. I almost bro. hit him. Yeah. I stopped and was like, yeah. If, you, if somebody well, gets in the way, either. oh, that would be really bad. He's kind of a tank. Huh? <laughs> He's kind of a tank. <laughs> He's a tank. <laughs> 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 you take that one. <laughs> just, <laughs> hey, you know, I, I got to say something. This is really interesting now. You know, uh, you know, what do they say about, you know, what's that saying about women when they all hang out together enough times, their cycles start to line up, <laughs> right? You guys have heard that, right? Yeah. Everybody gets a... I don't know if that's true it's or not. It's not. We've actually know. looked it up. Remember, we. Looked, you know what? There's so we, if there's actually conflicting. I know you're going with there's this, actually so. some some people still say it's a thing, and other people say it's not. So, so the theory was that it's like when you're at a light and your blinkers it, on, it's and the car's blinkers on. Right? Eventually, they align. Yeah. yeah, but then I read some other articles that are saying no. There might be some evidence. Anyway, here's where I'm going with this. I think all of us have connected in a very strange way. Because we all have shitty sleep at the same time. No, I think every time. Yeah, I didn't have any tummy issues until you. I swear, your gut Me either. Has influenced my gut, yeah. dude. Actually, like, I did. I just didn't. I ignored it. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> I, I just never had any of this stuff. Now oh, I feel like, like I have yeah. everything you got. I feel like, man, if like all the things you're- sprinkle a little bit. Yeah. A little bit of poop on your guys' food. Every, so you guys get my back Everything you were sensitive to, I feel like I, I get knew sensitive you did to that. now. No. <laughs> Shut you up. sick bastard. No, I, no, no. So I, I'm, I had shit sleep last night. So I, I woke up at like 4 or 3.30, 4, and that was it. And then I'm restless all the, from there on till 6 where I'm like up and I can't get fully you know good sleep. I come in here. Doug comes in. Like man, I had crappy sleep. Doug's like, oh yeah, me too. And then Justin comes in, oh yeah. me too. And then you, I mean, we all slept bad last night. I sabotaged myself though because I was still, you know, nibbling on some some cookies from Everett's party. Uh, so wait that a destroyed minute. me. Wait, wait, let's get a little more specific. I mean, not nibbling, cookies, like, or was it a pizuki? Yeah, <laughs> That's a big it was, ass. <laughs> it, was, it was a big hefty chunk of of uh, chocolate. Chip. And it messed you up. When you guys do something, was it this weekend? It was during the week because, uh, yeah, he. Um, it was his birthday. You threw a weekday birthday party. Well, that's a dick move, dude. Like, uh, dad, why is it only like here? two friends? We so had one <laughs> no. school night. We had this really cool. He, I feel bad for him because we had this like awesome birthday all set up for him. Like he was gonna have like you know his friends were gonna stay over. Yeah. We we're gonna do all these activities, all this stuff, and then um, like his friends, you know, couples friends got COVID, and then. You know, we had it going through the house, so we had to like delay it. And so this was just like the family get together thing. Oh, okay. So we did that. But uh, so did I he mean, not get a makeup birthday then at all? He will. We're we're, we're scheduling right now with his friend's parents oh, to no, see okay. if we can make it work. But uh, I know it kind of, you know, like it, you just see he he was having a hard time with it. And was of like, course, you know. I felt terrible oh, for him, man. but it, dude, that's just how it goes. I bet these that's days. happening a lot right now for like everybody. I'm, yeah, I mean, how many? How many? I mean, I know, so I know more people. I think I said this the other day. Like, I know more people right now that uh, have COVID than like don't have COVID. Like, mm -hmm. that's how fast it's going around right now. Yeah. So, I, you got to think that there's tons of poor kids who've got either their parents that caught it right when they're supposed to have a birthday, or yeah. one of the kids that catches it. Like the kids' school, like everybody got it. And but it, the the good news is, it's like it's making its way out. Yeah. So yep, yep, totally. here and gone. So you ate that and it messed you up, huh? You yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was up and I have this weird, so with acid reflux, it's, it's kind of one of those things where it's sometimes it's just, it wakes me up cause it's like, oh, it stings and it burns. This time it was like, it was just stuff coming up where I felt like I was like drowning in the middle of the night. Like, and I would just wake up like, oh, and it oh, kept man. happening. So yeah, I just, I do the old move of like, go to the toilet and blah, just get rid of it. 
Wow. Yeah. And then you're okay? Yeah. And then I was, I was all right. Holy cow. Yeah. That's so <laughs> terrible. You just got to get just get it out. Jesus Christ. Yeah, exercise the demons. No, no, that's that's bad, dude. No, I, I just, I'm restless. So it's like I, I'll, I'll start to drift off and then wake myself up for some damn reason. Uh, yeah. And then here's what's really annoying. Oh, this was <clears throat> annoying. I finally start falling asleep. And I guess I started snoring. And you know how I know this? My wife wakes me up. Yeah, kicks you. Boom. Yeah. I'm like, oh, just <laughs> Nice elbow sleep. in the ribs. Now both of us aren't sleeping. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> terrible and it's like 3 a.m right like i swear that's like yeah. the time that always happens dude speaking of kids okay but first i'm a little warning here okay trying to get too heated and let's try to keep it uh let's try to keep it as well before you transition into the the heated stuff i do have a question because i did speaking of kids i'll stay on the topic okay. for you so right. but before you piss off our audience and get everybody all fired up okay um I had a question for you guys that, so Katrina, I don't want to say we got into it, but we had like, uh, she was giving me a hard time when I, I came home last yesterday and she was really busy. And so, uh, I took Max, you know, away from her right away and him and I were like playing and we were upstairs doing stuff. They were in his closet doing stuff. And then I, he wanted to go outside and yesterday was like a, a sunny day. It's cold. It's like 64 or so like that. So it's pretty cold, but it was sunny and nice and not really windy at our place. And, uh, so yeah, let's go outside and he's barefoot. You know, and and he's wearing like these these thin sweats and shirt. I did a video of mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys saw my story or not. And so we go out there, and I'm letting him play in the water and the mud yeah. and get stuff like that. And Katrina's like, "You need to put all this stuff on him." She's telling me how he's cold. He just got better from being sick, and he's been so sick all the time like that. And I'm like, "Honey, you you gotta understand. Like, if we if we always bundle him up and we never allow his body to adapt." and learn to handle cold temperatures and hot temperatures. And we're always trying to regulate it to keep it perfect because we're afraid he's going to get sick. I'm like, you may be protecting him at this moment, but you're setting him up for having this super weak system in the future. And I'm not saying that we should always have our son out, you know, naked and barefoot in the freezing cold and stuff like that. But intermittently challenging that I think is really important that you do that. And you're always pushing back on me when I when I want to do that. So you gotta you gotta let me do that every once in a while, or else he's gonna be like it all yeah. not be able to handle that and he stuff. He was okay. Yeah, yeah. No, he yeah. he was totally fine. Like he was having a blast and playing. But the reason why I'm bringing it up to you guys is uh, one, I don't know if that's a conversation that you guys have had to have at your house or not. But I had to like really break it down and explain to her like the way the body. And I said, listen, the body is always adapting. One, in, in one direction. It's either getting stronger in a direction or it's getting weaker in a direction. And I said, if we coddle his temperature all the time and then we keep in this perfect 72 degrees, whether he's mm -hmm. in the house at 72 degrees or we're putting on clothes so he's neutral in that all the time, it's never challenging that system in his body. And so there's tremendous value in that. Did yeah, it, I use that same argument when kids like forget their jacket. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, oh, well, I guess, uh, you know, you're going to go ahead and <laughs> deal with this and, and, uh, you know, challenge your body with the fact that it's going to be cold for uh, the rest yeah. of this time. Did it, is it now? Is it, is, is it she like this now because of that time that you didn't give him water and he got sick and threw up? <laughs> that's different. He was dehydrated. So. That's, that's different. <laughs> She's like, so, make sure you give him water. Like, well, water. you know what? <laughs> that's probably why it backfires on me because sometimes I think she thinks that I'm just like being irresponsible. So I think that was her, her reaction. Is this like, you know, go, it's like I'm being lazy, like I don't yeah. want to put them on. I'm like, no, I intentionally do that. You know, you know what? what two kids like, are so different from each other. I, I think you can often tell when they're cold because they're, they're, believe it or not, I mean, the lips will start to turn a little blue and their hands get really cold and you yeah. can kind of tell. And kids are different, man. My, my, my son's a, he's a little heater. He's always hot, like yeah. always, you know. But my older son was the opposite when he was little. He would get. Cold. I mean, regardless if he's cold or not cold, though the the value of of training him in a cold condition like yeah. that is, I think, it, it's tremendous. I mean, you have to understand that is that system is responsible also for coughing and sneezing and also that if you make him more resilient, he's only going to be able to fight off things in the future. Well, so, do, do you know what they do in? Yeah. I think it's Russia. I want to say. Uh, that oh, they throw them out in the snow. Well, what they do is when they give a kid a bath, they keep cold water. Well, no, they'll do a normal bath, and at the very end, they do a super cold rinse. Well, you remember Kyle Kingsbury? Mm -hmm. His kid had never even touched warm water. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. I'm serious. Like he, yeah. they bathed him from the from birth in cold water. And, you know, he'd be out in wintertime on our coast swimming with his dad in the ocean like it was no big deal. Wow. And, I mean, that's a little extreme, right? So I don't I don't think – and that's what I was trying to explain to her. I'm like, listen, I'm not saying that we should always mm. freeze my kid out and stuff like that. But I think we should make him a little cold and uncomfortable yeah. sometimes because I think that it's yeah. only going to strengthen his immune system in the future by doing that versus always kind of coddling yeah, that. No, you're yeah, no. I, I, you, know, you know how my dad would tell stories. You know how my dad took baths when he was a kid? You want to hear something crazy? <clears throat> they didn't have – indoor plumbing he was really poor 
So they would get water and then they would heat it up. They would have to heat it up by the pot on the stove and then pour it into this big uh, yeah. like basin. And then there were six kids in his family and they would start with the baby and work all the way up the chain until my dad, who would be dirty because he was working, mm -hmm. and then my grandfather. So they'd all use the same freaking water, dude. And, and the, the baby would get it first, and so they'd move all the way up. My dad's like, that's how I wash myself. I hope he doesn't pee in it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. No, you just, yeah, it's all right. Just put some soap on it. You'll be okay. <laughs> yeah, it's it's right. crazy. I was just watching the show, and they were, it was, I don't remember the, the time or the era it was, and that, that was like a big deal. They were at like some, you know, or like get away like a hotel or something like that and you know that was back in the days when you'd have to go shuttle the water like yeah. there wasn't even a, a running pipe that went to the bathrooms no. you have to go down somewhere get the water get the water yes. bring it up and then pour it in the bathtub you know and that and that was like a yeah. like a luxury to have yeah, like a dude. warm a warm dude, bath my dad remember my dad got married when he was 19 and up until he got married he slept in the same bed with uh, half of his siblings and they'd sleep head to toe like this so they could fit so my dad's like, yeah, I'd have my brother's feet right next to my head. And that's how I slept up until I, I moved out. I'm like, holy shit, that's terrible. Yeah. But, you know, what are you going to do? All right, ready to piss everybody off? Yeah, there we go. Oh, All man. Right, here we go. So there's a this, this is a proposed bill, so it's not a one that passed. Nonetheless, I can't believe someone would even propose this. California, I got to read which politician proposed this because this, this person needs to go to, I don't have know, they, they need to get rid of them. Have they proposed anything <laughs> of value in the last few years? Not in California. Oh, it's <laughs> I have not seen anything positive out it's, of the state. It's unbelievable. So I got to look and see where it is. I, I, I think I might have lost it. Nonetheless, I'm going to read it to you. I'm going to tell you what it's all about. So it's a proposed bill where kids as young as 12 will get vaccinated without parental consent. Yeah. So disempower parents so the school completely. now do we have anything at a federally level federal level that protects that because it's, a, I, it's at the state level i know but it's something that, that still protects that though that like they don't get if it got all the way up to the supreme court they would get vetoed for sure because, oh i think this would go to the supreme court if they tried to if they passed it yeah you can't do okay I mean, so, that would, could you imagine if it was so like california state most ridiculous thing ever okay heard. so scott wiener Introduced the bill late Thursday in Sacramento. You sound like a wiener. Such Here's a wiener. A, what a dumbass. L listen to this quote. Giving young people the autonomy to receive life-saving vaccines, regardless of their parents' beliefs or work schedules, is essential for their physical and mental health. Can I tell you something right now? Because 12-year-olds are so smart. Our Dude. state just ignores <laughs> all like, current data. Dude, I'm sorry. You don't own my kid. It's my kid, not yours. Do you know what I would do if I found out that they gave my kid a medical treatment? That, now, they say life-saving. There's a difference. Vaccine is preventative. It's different than my. you gave my kid, you had to give him blood because he got in an accident. I wasn't there or whatever. It's totally different. Yeah. But if I find out that a teacher or some politician gave my kid something without my consent, oh, well, that'd be a bad day. Well, yeah. anything. Anything. I mean, I, mean it, I know it's heated right now to talk the whole vaccine thing, and you can't say something like that without sounding like you're an anti-vaxxer, but it's like, dude, it's not about that. It's like you're you're giving my child no. something without my consent. Get the fuck out of here. It's a care, family decision. I don't care what it is. There's... I get mad if someone does that with a sucker with my son. Get out oh, here, you know what I'm dude. saying? Like, don't, These lines don't of give like my kid anything. allowing the state to come in and dictate like how families operate is insanity. It's crazy that they would even propose something like this, but it comes from this very twisted mentality that they know better and yeah. that your kid is actually theirs. It's theirs to raise and they know better and you do a shitty job. Hey, and since no. you're talking about stuff like this, that's like controversial or heated, did you, are, are you following what happened with Chamath? I know we, we commented on it and stuff like that, but I, I don't know. It, since we recorded our episode, I know that he put a statement out and I and, saw that. Yeah. So it looked like he was, uh, kind of apologizing, kind of not, I don't know. I'm waiting for the next podcast. Yeah, to hear today. what he says about it. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious to yeah, see. Well, I hope I saw everybody be posting it like yeah. crazy. Well, he got targeted because he's a he he owns a, a NBA team. Mm -hmm. There's the whole like oh the NBA is friends with China yeah, thing. They're tied in with China. Somebody yeah. in our forum thought I was supposed to denounce it. I thought that was comical. Yeah, no, calling stupid. me to denounce it. <laughs> yeah, ridiculous, dude. Speaking of <laughs> denouncing. Did you see that ad that KFC put out? That's getting just destroyed. Did you see it? The chicken nuggets. Oh, wait. The, it, so it's an ad. I, I thought that was like what I saw was they actually have meatless nuggets now. They like, do, and the picture that they posted, they have the meatless like nuggets, fried and, erasers, and they have a couple of them oh, cut, yeah. cut in half. <laughs> yeah. And it's like it looks obviously, disgusting, yeah. Dude. What is that, dude? Like fried erasers. Why? When it, you it know, does look like fried erasers. Okay, so if I was KFC, if I ran KFC, this is the meeting I would have. I'd sit in a big board, you know, room, whatever, and I tell everybody, 
can we just admit that we're not healthy? Like, let's yeah. stop pretending like we're trying to be healthy. Let's just make fried chicken. Yeah. It's not about that. Loves. I don't know how thing has. And any, it's not healthy. It has nothing to do with health. This has everything to do with the movement in that direction. And of, it's not even healthy, anyways. No, yeah, we, we got to get beyond that. all this stuff. Look at that meatless nuggets. Ugh. Disgusting. Get beyond beyond meat. That is dis. Look how gross that looks. What is that? Right. Although it might taste good because it's fried. I've never actually had anything that was fried that it's didn't just, taste good. It's Franken chicken. Let's be honest. That's why I like uh, Carl's Jr. Carl Jr. doesn't <coughs> pretend. Yeah, no. They're like, we're bad for you. Come, yeah. come eat it one. You come, come, come eat a burger. Come eat, bad for you. You. <laughs> you know you want it. Yeah. You know, it's late at That's night. That's actually a pretty good ad. I wonder if they do something with that. Yeah. It's just that when they're pretending, like they're trying to act like, oh, it's this is meatless. And, you know, you make fried chicken. Just when you guys when you guys think of fat, you just made me think of like Carl's Jr., like the like an ad that like I'm reminded of. Like, when, what do you think are some of the best ads they've done in the in the last two the decades? Like Paris Hilton where it's like dripping. It drips, huh? Yeah. With the guy cheating, remember the guy yeah. che- the, where the wife thinks he's cheating because he's got like it looks like lipstick. There's something about that. He the wipes, big he wipes ass his, burger uh, that's dripping. He it's wipes like his face appealing. with the inside yeah. of his his, his but shirt. Carl that's Jr. was smart because they stopped pr- they stopped playing that game. They're like, let's just embrace what we are: big, messy, dis- like not good for your burger. I wish every business did that. Yeah, yeah. Just to just, just, just stick with what you're winning with. Do your thing, yeah. man. Nobody yeah. cares. Stop it, appeasing yeah. to this nonsense. Isn't there that restaurant in Vegas called what Heart Attack Grill or something like that? There's a restaurant, right? Oh yeah, is it in Vegas? Yeah, yeah, and they crush. Is that what it, is that what it's called? <laughs> yeah, oh, people funny. go there to like challenge each other to eat as much as possible. It's called you Heart know, Attack Grill, like if I'm not mistaken. Cholesterol great. infused and, food, and you get maybe Doug can look it up. You get a discount if you're over 300 pounds. Oh really? Yes. Yeah. And the and then the the waiter or the people that work there are dressed like nurses. <laughs> is that true? Is this true? Yeah, dude. Yes, I, in Vegas, I've never seen. I don't this. know. Oh. If it's in Vegas, Doug. Look, maybe Doug can find this it. This is old. But I feel like. The '90s, I remember like like that being a thing. I'd, I haven't grill. heard it from them in forever. Oh yeah, Las Vegas. Look at that. Wow. Like they don't pretend. You know what I'm saying? How have I never heard of this place? <laughs> yeah, like stop acting. I like I mean, you're, you're in heaven if you're like a chubby chase. Fighting right? anorexia since 2005. So, <laughs> so do they, do they have a wow. do they have a scale there where people actually get on and weigh themselves for the discount? I don't know, Doug. Find their actual website. I don't know what you're looking at there. He's looking at like a, yeah, like that, that is their guy. website. That's their website. Wow. Yeah, it's not a good website. Yeah, I mean, like it's old school. Maybe See, look, they're dressed like doctors and nurses <laughs> that try to serve you. Oh wow! <laughs> they, have, they have the double they bypass the burger. Yeah, the double <laughs> bypass burger. Oh my god! Flatliner fries, butterfat shake. Have you guys ever seen? Um, like, have you been to a restaurant like that where they have like a featured item that's like impossible to eat? Yeah. So I've been to this one yeah. truck stop. It was in like Southern Illinois. And their whole thing was this burger that was like literally like this big. And the, the hardest part, like I saw a guy get through like most of the meat, but you can't, you don't get it for free unless you like eat the, the bun, everything. which is like a whole loaf of bread on like both sides. And so this guy's just grinding through eating and and he, he got a crowd. Everybody's like cheering him on and everything. And it's just like. So American. It's so, <laughs> can you imagine? Exactly. Right. Like there's people that don't even have food and he's just like, oh, I can't do it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to force feed myself. What's, hey. What are some of the craziest feats of eating that you guys have ever done? Do you guys have any. Any any story? I mean, or? I think I think eating a whole like extra large pizza is pretty crazy by yourself. Yeah, you've done that. Yeah, before. I've done something like yeah. that before. My, after you know the pizzas. times where it's been crazy is after a show, which is the, why I totally understand why some of these people put on so much weight. Your appetite is just it's roaring. ravenous, on. and it's like you eat a huge meal and it it just like kicks you off like oh this is warm up time oh yeah, yeah wow. it's like you just it's really it's which i you know i tell you it it takes a lot of discipline um cuz the first two shows i remember eating like that i was so hungry and i told my oh it was such a big deal i was like oh i'm just going to go to town and it's like you you and you don't get um you don't get sick and nauseous feeling like if i were to sit down and try to eat a whole pizza right now I wouldn't even get halfway through, and I would feel yeah. like oh, yeah. like oh, that's Destroy too much. Me. I would you would have to really force myself. But after a show, when I'm depleted like that hard, you, I'd power through something like that and be like, oh, I could oh, still man. I could still do some dessert right now, or like it's still hungry. No, I, I did it. I did it once. This is back in the day when I was younger, and I just all I cared about was the scale. And of course, you know, I, I was skinny as a kid, so I just want to gain weight. And I bought whatever the largest bucket of chicken you could get at the KFC is. So it was oh, like, yeah. it's like for a family of seven or something like that. <laughs> and I ate the whole thing by myself. And till this day, 
I can't smell KFC without getting nauseous. Oh wow! I, yeah. I can't. You, it just I went, went so far. It was too much. After yeah. uh, I smelled that, like that's chicken me with afterwards. pancakes. Like I I used to be a big breakfast eater, and when I was in college, we'd we'd go and, and stop at like an IHOP or one of these like uh, buffet places where you just stack plates, and I would eat like I would eat scrambled eggs, bacon, and then like pancakes and i remember eating just stacks of pancakes i think i stacked up like it was like five or six plates of like full stacks of pancakes so healthy and was just like completely worthless on the field i ended up like you know you, know, you get that like a total crash afterwards yeah. i was Diabetes. so tired of <laughs> Is that, yeah, hometown buffets like that over here yeah oh. a- after usa's i i um it was late when we, we got done in vegas and i was i was craving a cinnabon and it was like five, 10 minutes before it closed. It was on the other side of town from where we were at. And I offered the guy that worked there that I'd pay him 50 bucks if he held it open until <laughs> wow, we got there. Wow. So I gave him 50 bucks on top of the six full-size cinnamon rolls. I had four of them. I couldn't get any further than that. That was wow. that was pretty, oh, that was, oof. yeah, that was. That is terrible. I think it was like 1,500 yeah. calories or so per, I think, oh, I think somewhere around, good, somewhere around there. I mean, By the way, deadly. I want to say something real quick. We talked about having poor sleep or whatever. Right before the podcast, I had two servings of the Organifi Pure. That stuff is magic. Yeah, I actually feel okay right I now. Haven't I was seen. feeling like garbage earlier. Have totally. you doubled up like that? I haven't doubled up on mm-hmm. it before. Yeah, I don't know if you're supposed to. So don't. <laughs> I do shit like is that. Is that but. the so you're not doing the packet? You're doing a, no. I, I did the scoop right, but I did I did uh, t- I did serving. one packet today, but yeah, I've done that before. I have two packets. Man, I, that's incredible. I yeah. literally felt like complete dog shit and and i took i took the serving about 30 minutes later uh yeah. i feel i feel way better oh wow yeah it's pretty wow. pretty remarkable you know talking about vegas it just reminded me of a, a i want doug to look this up because i just briefly saw it before we got on the podcast and I, so i should probably research to confirm but it looked like it was true uh dana white has came out and officially announced that they will be they will be hosting a metaverse fight no. Wait a minute. Who's how? Wait, is like how does that work? It's gonna be like video I, game fighting. I, I no. I don't think it'll be video game fight. I don't think that's how it works. Are they gonna wear? I don't they, know. They it's, wear like little dots so they can track them and like throw them in there. Or digitally. maybe they actually fight and then they put them in the metaverse. Weird. That you can watch. You, you'll be able to watch yeah. it. You pulling it up for us right now, Doug? Yeah, I want to see. Yeah, I'm pulling works. it up. What that's you gonna see? be weird. It's true. Yeah. Is it? You're gonna uh, watch uh, the power bar like go down every time you hit? It looks true. Yeah. You get like super like like power shots where their, their hand turns into flames. <laughs> yeah, they're like the stars go above their head. Kill exactly. him. Finish him. <laughs> that would be pretty cool, actually. Weird. Do you guys follow his thing that he does on uh, Fridays now? His, it's pretty clever, right? He does this like uh, every Friday, like fans and people send in like different foods and stuff to try. Mm-hmm. So he tries all these like exotic foods and different stuff. And he then he kind of reports, oh, that tastes awesome or it tastes like shit or whatever. La- it was just last week or the week before he did this uh, dill pickle one. Never heard of this, dude. Where you dump out the juice? Oh, you from- said. I did you, you see said- this, Andrew? Did you see him do this? So he takes he takes like he took like three three like uh, like kosher dill pickles, the big ones or whatever. Pours the juice out, and then you take uh, like Hawaiian punch, like your favorite flavors. He did like three different flavors, like watermelon and something like that. Right. And then you pour it back into the pickle with the, pickle. With the pickles, and then you and they, I think it's twenty four hours or something that you let it soak and in you there. You eat a Hawaiian punch pickle. Yeah, and then you eat like a Hawaiian. Pu- yeah, it sounded disgusting. Ugh. He didn't seem like he was too impressed with it either. Oh. <laughs> I was like, who this started like something a like that? Dude, speaking of metaverse, did you guys hear about this kid who became an accidental min- millionaire with an NFT? Did you hear about this? What? what? Okay, so what kind was it? Because Did you find out more about that metaverse fight? Yeah, it's, it's going to be a fight. Uh, basically, you just you just watch it, I guess. You just watch it well, in the metaverse. Yeah, I think so. Huh? So that's what I think it's going to be a real fight, but you'll you'll watch it inside the metaverse. Yeah, I need to look into it deeper, but okay. uh it doesn't look that exciting to me, All right, personally. So, so listen to this, Adam. You're going to love this. A student in Indonesia has made a fortune after turning a collection of selfies into NFTs because he thought it might be funny. He did it as a joke. So Sultan Gustaf Al-Ghazali, who studies computer science, took nearly 1,000 pictures of himself sitting in front of his computer over a four-year period before transforming them into NFTs. Then he sold them. So check this out. He sold, he, he, the 22-year-old originally priced each one at just 0.0001 ETH, ETH, which is $3. But they soon skyrocketed in value after gaining the attention of high-risk crypto tra- traders with individual images now selling for more than $10,000. <laughs> 
<laughs> why? And he's making a kickback royalty on each Bro, one. you got to see this kid. Now, you know what I he think? Made, is, he made, why he, do you want that? You know what's funny to he me? He made $1.2 million. The, are, the, are, the, are the NFT junkies that would take an article like that to prove that where NFTs are That's going? That proves that this is all wacky. It's just... There's nonsense. Yeah, I'm, I'm like doubling and tripling down on all the like people. I love. Oh, by the way, so people that are sending me the NFT yeah. memes, I appreciate it. I love it because I'm like, I. It gets. It's my new people to rile up now. Yeah. yeah. So like, if I say something about it's, NFTs, they're they not get, religious about it at all. Oh, not no. at all. They get so offended. It's I'm like here's the thing. So too, much money. I continually you. say this on the show. Like they are here to say, 100. percent It's going to be uh, game changing. Like the technology is going to disrupt a lot of industries mm -hmm. and change the way we do things. Like. Oh yeah, it's here. But if you think some but there's a lot of dumb twelve year old kid right making a million dollars off of selfies he did, no, if you think that's gonna be the future people, of how yeah. we how we use NFTs, you're a like, moron. You're putting money into that, like that's just ridiculous. Yeah, the vast majority of people are gonna are gonna lose their pants. Eighty percent at least. Eighty percent at least if not some more. Some kids selfies that you just yeah. bought for twelve grand. It's stupid. That, yeah, it's ridiculous. You know, someone was I heard a guy, another NFT guy that was like pushing, like talking about how amazing it is and like Basically, you know the 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 board ape yacht club thing that we yeah. were talking about before. Yeah. So I, I heard him explaining more. It's like it's like you're joining a, a mastermind group, and imagine being in a mastermind group that's got Snoop, Snoop Dogg, Snoop Dogg, Pharrell, Stephen Curry, all hanging out in this little group because you have to have a quarter million dollars um, just to get into it. And okay, theoretically, that's like okay, that's yeah. wow, that's valuable to be working with those minds. But here's the thing: what happens? When those guys are bored and they don't want to participate in exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. They opt out. They're what happens when, when Steph Curry's busy playing basketball and yeah. Snoop Dogg's busy with a million other things he's got yeah. going on and they're not in there? And then it's yeah. just your dumb ass with your quarter million dollar ticket yeah. to get in. Hey, hey, Snoop, you want to play? And they, and they don't care because yeah. what's a quarter million dollars to them? They might use it. It's like the way you probably buy like Steph, a, can a video you, game can you and show play me for some a week dribbling and then you're over. skills? Yeah. Hey, you I'm wanna, too busy. You want to play some video games? Nah, man, I'm trying to play a game right now. Yeah. That's yeah. the part that I think that people are, 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 because I get it, right? I, they're, they're, obviously would be tremendous value of being in a, a small group like that where you're connected to multi-millionaires that are making moves and doing stuff like it'd be like a mastermind group. Like a lot of people love joining mastermind groups not for what they learn in the mastermind group but but purely for their connections networking and that's why well, you know they're showing up yeah right yeah. but exactly and even if they do show up temporarily like what happens when they just it gets old for them and they don't care anymore? Your NFT is worth nothing. Yeah, mm -hmm. or they they find some other group they like hanging out with more, and it's well, like it feels like this is yeah. like a prime way to pump and dump something. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So mm -hmm. if you're a celebrity, you could sell NFTs to meet with you in the metaverse or whatever, get the price way the fuck up, sell yours off. And then bounce. So I heard another person talking about. You guys there's know, no regulations. Gary, I heard Gary V's made already like ninety million dollars off of his NFTs. Jeez. Wow. Okay. Is that crazy or what? What are we even doing, you guys? <laughs> well, yeah. that highlights. Some lady sold her farts in a jar. This kid made millions of dollars with the selfies. What are we doing? Farts and NFTs. Dude. Yeah. yeah this I, tell I you had no idea that was the beginning be so of the end, bro. It's hey, hey, if you had asked me five years ago, <laughs> Sal, do you think someone's going to make make 150 or whatever it was half a million dollars? Yeah. Selling farts in a jar, and a kid would make a million dollars selling his selfies. What do you think? Like, get out of here. <laughs> That's, uh, I'd say I yeah I, b I believe there'll be a if pandemic. That's not a sign that. of weird times. I don't know. I don't know uh, what is. Hey, right? something else that's cool. Uh, oh yeah, he did. He made ninety million in ninety days. By the way, that's crazy. That's insane. Wow. All wow. right. Uh, here's something else that's cool. I was reading about blue light, right? Because we work with uh, Felix Gray, which is blue light blocking glasses, and I want to learn more about blue light and its effects on the brain. So we know that if you if you're exposed to blue light, especially through the eyes, right before bed, you'll produce less melatonin. It can affect your sleep because it sets your circadian rhythm. But did you know during the day, blue light increases uh, attention span, it makes you more alert, and it helps you with your memory. So why am I saying this? If you wear really strong blue light blocking glasses during the day when you're on your computer, you could be hampering your productivity mm -hmm. and your ability to pay better attention. This is one of the good things that Felix Ray did. They have daytime blue light blocking glasses yeah. and nighttime ones. The daytime ones only block the most damaging types of blue light, but allow others to come in, mm -hmm. so you stay alert and you're able to. Now, do because your work. of those benefits, have you guys of from blue light the the positive things that come from it? Have you seen people using it for training with athletes and stuff like that? No, but I came across an article actually where people are really are, yeah really? utilizing. So I, I read it for learning. There's some some universities that will have rooms that are where there's overhead blue light to help with studying. That's what I read in this article. 
Hmm. So what are they doing with athletes? Yeah, I, so I don't. I didn't go deep into it. I saw it maybe I don't know three or four months ago. I came across it and I thought, oh, that's interesting. Like they would be doing that, but I'd already read that about blue light because it's not all negative, right? Like it's not no, like no, it's just don't have it right before you go to bed. Right. Yeah. That, I mean, that's the case that I try and make all the time. Is like, listen, the the blue light is fine, but it's like if you're not if you are getting ready to go to bed and you're getting this bright blue light, then your brain just thinks it's freaking yeah. two o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah, and electronics put out quite a bit of of blue light and so concentrated, yeah, right? Yeah, so yeah. it's yeah. even. It's even so higher. it's like where the daytime. So if you work in a computer all day long, you want to wear blue light blocking glasses made for the day, and then you know a couple hours before bed. If you're still on, on electronics, then you wear the ones that are stronger because now you're preparing to go to bed. What you don't want to do is wear the nighttime ones all day long because you could be hampering your ability to retain information. I don't know how yeah. someone could do that because I when I wear the night Felix great like so I have make I, you sleep. I have huh? so many pairs right and. When I have them side by side and I put one on, put the other, I could I could actually see the difference yeah. when I look through them. But sometimes I've grabbed them before, like thinking one pair is the other pair and not realizing it. And then after I'm, I'm like nodding off while I'm sitting yeah. there, I'm like Jesus. These and then I realize, oh, this is the because they're like a thicker lens even. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you guys have noticed that before, but the daytime ones. I mean, like I said, if you go back and forth, you can, you can tell if you do. That. Yeah, you can yeah. tell a difference for sure. And that if I wear those things half hour hour into a show and I've got the the nighttime ones, oh, it'll yeah. put me to sleep, dude. Oh well, yeah, get drowsy real mm -hmm. quick. Hey, you got to check out one of our partners, Live On Labs. They make products, nutrient based supplements. Uh, B-complex supplements, magnesium 3 and 8 supplements. They have liposomal glutathione. They have products that your body actually absorbs and utilizes through a pharmaceutical-grade process. It's called liposomal technology. It's one of the few products and supplement companies out there that uses it. So a lot of times you take vitamins and minerals and other you know compounds and you just pee them out. That's not how these products work. You actually absorb and use them. And yes, you do feel a difference. So if you're interested, head over to liveonlabs.com forward slash mind pump, um, and you'll actually get a bunch of free sample packs if you just get one product. Again, it's liveonlabs.com forward slash mind pump. All right, here comes the rest of the show. First question is from Milena A. Race. Uh, what is better, HIT versus traditional cardio and why? Yeah, uh, this is one of those uh, annoying questions where I'm going to have to say it depends, right? So let's, <laughs> yeah. let's talk about the... Pros and cons of each, right? The pro of HIT, you burn more calories in a shorter period of time. It is more muscle preserving than traditional forms of cardio. No, can go back to that for a second, though. It's more calories uh, per the minute within it. Correct. But you could technically do steady state where for an hour compared to the 12 minutes, right. and you'll technically burn more yeah, calories. So, so, if, it's so make all, sure if they all do 15 minutes, right, yes. then you're going to burn more with HIT than you will with traditional. I, th I think it's important to know that because I know that it gets marketed like that a lot of times, yeah. and so people are like, wow, I can do 15 minutes and it burn more calories than an hour of cardio. It's no. like, oh, no, that's not what it is. It's no, it's more per time spent. It's It does preserve muscle better. Um, it is better for, uh, if you want, the kind of explosive performance that a lot of sports are looking for. Um, here's the cons. Requires a lot higher skill. The, in, the risk of injury is much higher. If you're a high-stress individual, probably not appropriate. So it's less appropriate for far more people than traditional cardio. Now we go to traditional cardio. It does burn less calories, but it also tends to be more recuperative. Right. It doesn't preserve muscle as well, but if you're doing traditional resistance training and your diet's okay, then you're you're probably okay. Traditional cardio is not going to give you the kind of athletic performance that most sports look for unless your sport is like long distance, you know, type endurance, like running or whatever. Um, and it's just more appropriate for more people. So essentially what we're, what we're asking is what's better, a hammer or a screwdriver? Yeah. And it depends on the job and the tool that we need for the job. Well, I think too, like risk factors. So if you go in the high intensity route, yes, it is more muscle preserving, but also you have to be a little bit more advanced um, in terms of having the prerequisites and having yes. experience uh, exercising at that pace uh, where cardio, you can kind of string it out a bit longer, might not be quite as impactful in the joints. Like you can kind of structure it that way. So, you know, you, you have to kind of decide what makes sense in terms of your goals and like are you really at that level or you know should you just kind of construct more of a, a cardiovascular or like longer version of that you know every time we talk about cardio i feel like we upset the cardio bunnies hmm. uh, or the people that just absolutely love to do cardio um 
But I really wish that the, the general population or a majority of people that are listening to this that are trying to pursue fat loss, which is why most people get on cardio. Very few people are just doing it for overall health, which if that's the case, I think that's fantastic. Most people think it's one of the best modes for you to get in shape and to lose body fat. And I just wish if, if I could convey one thing to those people, I wish that you would you would figure it out without that first and then learn to add that in later and then have fun. Add hit. Try that out for a while. See how it makes you feel. Add a little bit of cardio. Maybe do some walking. Maybe do some hiking. Mm-hmm. Maybe do some stair mass. Maybe play with all these. But first, figure out your your caloric maintenance. Okay, what 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 amount of calories do you need to eat to maintain your body weight with no cardio and just your normal daily activities? And then learn how to program training in there, weightlifting, to see how the body changes from that. And or if you reduce a couple hundred calories from your maintenance, how your body responds as far as losing body fat, learn all that first and then bring and introduce cardio in and and, and bring it in intermittently and or put it in places that you go like, oh, I could see myself doing this for the rest of my life. I could definitely do a one hour hike every weekend or, you know, 20 or 30 minutes, you know, two to three times a week. But first, figure out figure out all those other things. Uh, how your body responds without it in there and then introduce it. I think it would just, it would benefit everybody so much. Yeah. As a primary mode of uh, exercise for fat loss, it's not very effective. It leads to plateaus, leads to metabolic adaptation. Um, It's just, it's just not a super effective sole way of, of weight loss, at least not on a long-term basis. But, you know, back to the, the question of hit versus traditional, which is, you know, more your steady state cardio, what percentage of your guys' clients that, do you did you put on hit and what percentage did you have do something similar to steady state? Um, I tended to use steady state more. So uh, did I. Yeah, like far more. It was a very small percentage. Yeah. I you know apply hit to just yeah, because same, of where they were coming from. Same here because if if I if you have movement pattern issues and a high stress life and I'm not there to monitor and watch you and I'm asking hit training requires. All out intensity or effort. It's very high intent. It's, I mean, it's part of the name, right? High intensity interval training. Whatever dysfunction you have or movement p- pattern issue you have is going to be amplified tremendously. And it's not a recuperative form of cardio. It's a more of a workout. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I like to have cardio. When I'm talking about the average person, if I'm talking to an athlete, that's totally different. But yeah, I'm talking to the average person. To hit quite a bit. Yes. Yeah, but we didn't train very many athletes. No, right? I'm no. not talking to the average yeah, person. I wanted cardio to be recuperative. So I would do lots of things like walking and hiking and cycling to where that's going to facilitate recovery rather than take away from the recovery that I need when I'm applying resistance training with them. So that's what I didn't want to do. I don't want your workout, your cardio workout, unless again, you're an athlete and there's a specific performance goal, but I didn't want your cardio workout to be so intense that it competed with what I was trying to do with resistance training in the sense that I had to modify my volume and intensity to make room for your cardio. I don't want to do that. Again, unless you're an athlete and you have specific performance stamina goals, but if your goal is fat loss and health, then I'm I'm going to pick the form of cardio that's appropriate for all of that in the context of what I'm doing with you. And it was probably 90% of my clients, I would have them do traditional cardio. You're also maybe gonna, 10% did hit. You're also going to pick the form of cardio that's more likely for them to sustain long-term. Yes. And getting a client, that's why we we talk about the steps and the walks and the hikes and strolls with your spouse. Like, <clears throat> It's so much easier to convince a client to do that. You said something the other day on the podcast too. It's so true. It's like, if I if I give my client like step goals or hey I want you to walk for an hour every day and you could break it you could break the hour up in ten minute increments you could do it all in one you could do it in two half hours I don't care just get an hour of walking purely walking for a day then that means a client can do this oh wow I have a fifteen minute break right now mm-hmm. I'm gonna go for a little bit of a walk or oh I'm on lunch now you know instead of driving to get food I'm gonna walk to get food like they can do things that like you're not gonna go like I'm it's my lunch break and I'm gonna go do sprints on the hill no like right. nobody <laughs> yeah. is doing that okay, unless you have a job. Yeah. Or change your your clothes and your sweat. It's just the the, it's just not likely to happen for most people. So for Mm. the general pop, I would say mine was more like a 70-25 split. I would say 75% of my clients I did steady state traditional uh, cardio or walking, 25%. And the reason why maybe I'm saying a little bit higher is because uh I 
I don't think I trained more athletes. It was I had this very small percentage was maybe one to five percent was athletes that I utilized hit. And then my advanced clients. So my clients that have been training for a long period of time and we've mm -hmm. done steady state cardio forever. We've done I've, I've strengthened them there and we've done explosive stuff. Yeah. And so they're ready for that. But I don't. Did you guys see what just happened to Brendan Shaw? Oh, he, yeah, he, himself. he hurt his. He blew uh, both his hamstrings. Yeah. Thought he would go for a sprint real quick. Yeah, nope. that wouldn't have decided that, to go 100%. Ha that having, wouldn't have happened if he went for a light jogger. That's ball. right. That's no, right. He was yeah. racing a friend. And the, the reason why I bring him up, not to throw shade, we, we got a lot of love for no, Brendan, no, we love is that, Brendan. that that's an example of why, as a trainer, I wouldn't do that with a normal client because it, it's an all out. It's a, that you were asking somebody for all out for 20 seconds to get after it as hard as they possibly can and then calm down. If you get after it as hard as you can and you haven't conditioned the body, to handle, that's exactly what happens. You blow yeah. a hamstring, you roll an ankle, you hurt your knee, yep. you do something like that in the pursuit of you're going to get this this fraction more of fat loss or retaining muscle over it. It's just not worth it for a majority of the clientele. Next question is from Cup of Joe. What is a good pre-workout meal? I've been doing Ezekiel bread with honey and peanut butter and a cup of coffee for months, but are there better things to eat specifically for strength training? Yeah, boy, people really get caught up in the in the, <laughs> the details and minutia of things that I don't think are that important. So yeah. here's the things to focus on. Uh, studies will show that for performance, about a, a couple hours before a workout, you want to have some carbohydrates and some protein, okay? Uh, where they come from doesn't matter except for this. Make sure it's very easily digestible, okay? Because what will screw you up isn't whether or not you had – this faster absorbing starch or honey and this you know, fructose versus sucrose versus what? Who cares about that? It's not that's we're splitting hairs. It's about digestive digestion. And do you feel, are you going to your workout yeah. feeling bloated? Do you feel Is gassy? Is your body internally fighting something as you're now going to work out? Yes. That's Eat something really easy to digest. So for me, pre-workout meal would be uh, like some chicken, some white rice. And that's really easy for me to digest. I'd have maybe 50, 60 grams of carbs, 30, 40 grams of protein. And I'm ready to go. I wouldn't choose, uh, you know, proteins or, or carbohydrates that might give me a little bit of digestive distress, which where maybe later on in the day when I'm not going to work out, that might be okay. Not good uh, before the workout. I'm so glad that you went that mm -hmm. direction with this advice because when I was competing, I actually got into this a little bit. I mean, when you're when you're weighing and measuring and tracking and never missing and like we're, you're looking for every half a percent of advantage that you can get, you start to pursue some things like this. Like up until that point, I never did. Like it never- yeah, It doesn't make sense unless everything is perfect. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. Like it, like before that, I'd already been training for 15 years of my life. Never once did I like try that hard to time certain foods or really care about that so long as the overall diet was was good in the, in the day. Um, but when I got to this level where, you know, again, I'm looking for every competitive edge I can, I, I started to play with this stuff. And, you know, there's lots of stuff. There's people that are doing Pop-Tarts to do it. There's people yeah, that the are fast doing, absorbing cars. Yeah, and that. they make this case for it. And here's the thing that I, what I had found from trying all the things is it was, it was the meal that just digested well for me. Yeah. It just made me feel good in general. Like, it, and you know, maybe it wasn't the perfect ratio of carbs to protein that you might read that, oh, this is the most ideal. Yeah, for, what is it where they say two to one, right? Yeah. Two there's, there, and, and there's, a, there's, there's material out there to read that will, that will point you in the direction of what that should look like. But the truth is uh, it's, there's such an individual variance with everybody's digestive system that it's whatever food gets digested really easy for you that it doesn't impede on your training that will probably benefit your training the most. Mm -hmm. And just because somebody else does this one thing that like, you know, slams two or three pop tarts and they feel amazing and they swear by the pumps doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work the same way for you, especially if things like that upset your gut. So, you know, find a meal that, you know, keeps you satisfied. You don't feel overstuffed. It feels light when you, when you digest it, it's, you've given yourself, by the way, too, I think time is important. Like sometimes people do something a half hour before your workout. No, I, I, for me, it was, for me, it's about two, two hours. hours. Yeah. Yep. Two hours. Oh, I mean, it's, yeah. I think it's 90, 90 minutes to two hours is typically, I mean, liquids are different, but for most foods, your body takes about that long to to digest it, convert it over into fuel. So, you know, if you're doing something an hour before and you think it's impacting your workout, I mean, it's really not. Mm -hmm. Most of that's not even getting converted yet. So, you know, find something that you can you can eat that you like. And here's another thing too that matters, consistency. You know, if like 
maybe you could put together this perfect combination of foods that gives you like your extra 1% in your workout, but it's like so difficult to put that together every day. What the fuck are you worried about? You know what I'm saying? Like find something that you know you can consistently do and and stick with that. And that's probably the most important. I work out fasted every day. Every morning I work out at about 7 a.m. and I didn't eat anything that morning. It's the the dinner before that's my pre-workout meal. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, that's and the biggest thing is the digestive piece. Really, the, the difference between you know, rice versus potatoes versus you know pixie sticks or gummy bears. I've seen people promote just stupid aye, aye. excuse to eat garbage. Whatever. Um, it's just whatever digests well and is easy. And and what you want is some carbohydrates and some proteins. And that's basically it. Uh, really, it doesn't make a big difference. Next question is from Josh Shannonator. How can I recover more quickly from extremely high intensity squatting? Usually, I am buffered for five days. You are asking the wrong question. You're trying to. You're trying to. You got a leak in the ship, and you're asking me what the best, you know, right. silly putty is. How do to, I patch everything up? Yeah, no. the The problem is that you're working out too hard. Yeah. If you're hammered for five days, there's no recovery tool available. I don't even. I mean, like, what's that thing that Boba Fett sleeps in? Uh, the, <laughs> the, 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 yeah, that chamber. I don't know what it's called. Star but. Wars reference. <laughs> yeah, I love that you Unless that. you have one of those. Yeah, it's yeah. like a healing uh, chamber. Yeah, unless yeah. you have one of those. I mean, but no, there's no, there's no recovery tool or, or you know, technique or hack that's gonna. If you're hammered for five days, it's gonna make a difference. It's not gonna make a difference. The problem is you're working out. It's too much volume or too much intensity right. or both in your workout. Fix that. The recovery tools and stuff, you know what those are good for? Those are good for people who are always training near the line and they're 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 really dialed in about everything yeah. and they just want that slight extra edge. And I'll tell I'll, I'll list you here here's the list of things that are most or important. Or they have to perform like that's so, yeah, athletes. right. So they just did yeah. like an event and they performed at their highest peak and now that like it's really necessary you add all these recovery aids. Yeah, but but here's here's the li- here's the, the list of things that help with recovery in order of importance. Sleep, food, and water, and then all the other stuff like you know, red light therapy, and you know that might do a little bit, or sauna, or cold, or plunge, and that kind. Of, maybe it'll do a little bit, but yeah, the 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 fact that you said you're hammered for five days, there's nothing I could throw at you that exists today that will make that big. Isn't difference. it interesting? That's how this is how our brains operate. I was the same way yeah. too. You know, like I like would be, it's not the workout. That's like, the should I take some BCAAs or should yeah. I do some hot cold plunges or should I do a massage like right yeah. afterwards? Like, I'm yeah. thinking of should all the every CBD time. I'm so so versus yeah. the way I look at it now, which is like, oh, I have this amazing signal that my body gives me feedback when I overreach when I train. And look at this: the last two times I've trained legs, I've been sore for five days. Mm-hmm. It's not that I'm yeah. missing a supplement. It's not that I'm I'm not doing something in my routine to speed up recovery. It's that I'm overtraining. I'm overtraining and I need to back off. And so that's the way you need to reframe this and think about this is that, and it's not, it's not a negative thing. It's just that simple is that you're training really hard probably on those days and your body is still sore when you go to train your legs again. And that is your sign that you did too much. Totally. And And you backing off doesn't mean that you're, you're slowing down your, your pursuit of going forward in in progress. No, it means you're going to accelerate. You're just getting smarter with your training. I have to like put that out there because there's so many uh, people out there still promoting like intensity by all means necessary, right? Like more is better. Like, no, there's a smart way to train where you still progress. You can lift more weight if that's the desired outcome, uh, but you got to be smarter about your training. No, Josh, here's the deal. If you trained less intensely or less volume, you'll get faster results than you're getting right now. So you're not going to compromise anything. Right now you're compromising everything because your workout is too intense. That's the problem. So back off and then watch what happens to your progress. Next question is from Nathan Teal. What is something that all of you preach but struggle to practice when it comes to fitness? Oh, that's easy for me. <laughs> that People is like easy for me. I, I, yeah, I, supplements is a big one for me. I, we always talk about how supplements don't make that big of a difference. <laughs> Yet you and, take everything. <laughs> and I, look, I, I mean, I admittedly have uh, like a dysfunctional relationship with supplements. It's like, uh, like almost like a drug addiction, I guess. Um, luckily, they're not <laughs> they're not drugs, but I do love messing with supplements. I like buying different supplements. Get That's the supplement companies right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shut up, Sal. They're knocking on our front door. Yeah, I I I do like supplements. I like uh, messing with them. I like experimenting. I like combining different things, uh, seeing how they work in my body. I like to experiment on myself, um, probably to the detriment of my own health. 
uh, and well-being. I'm fully aware of it, uh, and this this is one of the ways I'm a better coach and trainer for other people um, than I am for myself. But that that's an easy one for me. I know about that one, and, and I'll work on it one day. <laughs> well, overreaching for me. I mean, just to kind of piggyback uh, on that last question, um, uh, sometimes I, I just feel so good. And I just want to like recreate uh, some of those moments I had like in my career where I was um, lifting heavy weights and I was like hitting personal uh, bests and you just get in kind of the momentum and the flow of the workout where I'm like, just like, yes. And then I get after, I know better. And it literally I'll stop myself and be like, "Ah, I probably should back off, but I want to do it, you know? (laughs) And then I just throttle down. So it's not always consistently, um, smart. Uh, every time I, I go in there and work out, sometimes I, I do, you know, stretch that capacity quite a bit. Um, I would say, I don't know, like rock stars or diet cokes. Those are probably things that I wouldn't promote for people to be doing. And it's you never had your, you never put that in your client's diet plan. Yeah, yeah I never <laughs> I never wrote that into a diet plan or encouraged someone to do that. Yet I still enjoy a good diet coke when we're eating out somewhere and. I've been on a rock star kick for the last probably year or so, um, which I got to stop because I can already feel it eating away at my teeth and I'm going to go see my dentist and I know they're going to tell me right away. So uh, that's probably one that uh, I don't encourage people doing and I and I catch myself still doing it even though I, I preach otherwise. Other than that, oh, you know, here's another one. Um, definitely I, I, I'm challenged on the staying off my phone late at night. Um, I have practices that I put in place where I put the phone away and do things like that, but it still creeps back into my life. Like I definitely find myself, um, curious about, you know, what's going on with the business. We just launched something. And so I'm watching the numbers like crazy and I'm just so interested or we just got a cool email and I want to read it. I want to wait till tomorrow. And so, um, and sometimes I, I, I like that stuff so much. Like I love, looking at the business, like I've never had a business that has so many different analytics that, um, I find it like relaxing, even though I know it's not relaxing for my brain to do that. Like I enjoy just sitting there. And so I catch myself doing things like that late at night when I know it disrupts my sleep. So that's probably something I can always continue to be better. And then, yeah, the, probably the drinks are probably the big ones. Other than that, I'd say I'm pretty consistent with the stuff that we talk about and we say on the show. Yeah. I would say, you know, if you're a coach or a trainer, it's really important to be honest uh, to yourself uh, about this kind of stuff because I think trainers tend, and I, this used to be me too, I would kind of fall in this trap of like, I need to be perfect, otherwise I can't help other people. Nobody's perfect. Nobody is perfect. Um, and that, because you're not perfect doesn't mean you can't help other people. Just be honest and open. I think the, the, the challenge is when, like I would have trainers that did this, um, that worked for me, they would preach eating clean and perfect, and then they would preach it like they were gods of eating perfect and clean. And then when they would eat garbage food, they would hide it. Uh, you know, like they'd yeah. eat the occasional bag of chips or you know fast food, and they'd hide it. Oh, don't let anybody see. And it's like, you know, you put yourself in a weird position because you're. you're I'm not a real human. Uh, yeah, you're you're making yourself. Uh, you're you're turning yourself into something that you're not, and that's going to backfire. So I think it's important to be super honest. And and look, I'll, I'll be the first one to tell you that I am a way better coach and trainer for other people than I am for myself. And I think it's like that for most uh, coaches and trainers. So, And that's the thing. Nobody's perfect. And and the pursuit of health and fitness is not the pursuit of perfection. That is what will get you in a lot of trouble. You pursue perfection, it's not going to – not only will you never get there because it doesn't exist – but you'll probably go uh, in the opposite direction. So keep that in mind. Look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com and download all of our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any fitness goal. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So Justin is at mindpumpjustin. I'm at mindpumpsal. By the way, there's somebody on Instagram using my name and trying to scam people into buying crypto. I swear to God. <laughs> my name is spelled- I have a new mind, business I'm starting. It's Mind Pump Sal. One L and Mind Pump. There's an I in there. They'll switch the letters around and make it look like me. It's not me. I'm Mind Pump Sal. There's only one. And then you can find Adam at Mind Pump Adam. 